In this video, I'm going to show you some of the features of a rear facing only or infant seat, specifically the even flow embrace 35. As always, read through your car seat manual and take a look at the stickers that are on the sides of your seat for the height and weight limits, as well as further instructions. The stickers also have great pictures to guide you through how to properly use the seat. This particular seat can be used for children four to 35 pounds and 17 to 30 inches. It is a rear facing only seat and can only be used in that direction. So this particular car seat is two pieces. It has a carrier and it has a base. And I'm going to show you how to remove the carrier off of the base. At the back of this seat, there is a gray lever down here. Just pull that level up and it releases the carrier off the base. So we'll start with some of the features of the base first. Now, um, children who are rear facing need to be properly reclined. Uh, newborns, children with poor head control cannot sit in a seat that is upright. So it nice, needs to be nice and reclined. Now, um, when you put the seat in your vehicle, you may notice that it could be too upright or far too over reclined, and you'll need to adjust the seat accordingly. So the base has an adjustable foot, and this gray foot goes in and out. And the way that you adjust it is by pressing the button here actually says even flow. If you press that, the foot will go up or go down. On the opposite side is a little window. And this window has the color red and the color green that flips back and forth. And when you have the base actually sitting in your vehicle seat, take a look at that window and see what color is in the window. If you see green, that means the car seat is properly reclined. If you see red, any portion of red, it means that the angle is off and therefore you're going to have to adjust the base to achieve that correct angle. Sometimes it may be hard to get the correct angle with the foot. In those cases, uh, you may want to roll up some towels or some small blankets to place underneath the seat to achieve that angle. But that's a last resort and only if you can't achieve it with the foot itself. Another feature that is on the base are the lower attachments. And right now they're stored. So I'm going to take them off either side. And they're actually already positioned through the belt path. And the belt path is down here at the bottom of the seat. This is where you install the car seat. So these lower anchors are part of your installation system. It's also where the seat belt could be routed if you're using that system um, instead. So remember, we only use one system or the other. These lower attachments are part of the system called LATCH. LATCH stands for Lower Anchors and Tethers for Children. Because this is a rear facing seat, I only have lower attachments. Top tethers are on forward facing seats. And again, because the seat can only go rear facing, you won't find a tether on this seat. These uh, attachments will hook into metal bars that are installed into your vehicle. If you drive a 2003 or newer car, latch anchor system is standard in your vehicle and you'll find them um, somewhere in your back seat. So look in your vehicle owner's manual to find out where those anchors are. And when you attach these, the hooks always go down and over the anchor, not up and under. And on the same side is an adjuster. The strap uh, will uh, tighten 
the uh, lower attachments and this gray lever, uh, gray button, if you push it, will release it. So that is how you tighten and release the lower anchor system. And that's, uh, that's pretty much all you need to know about the base. The infant seat with the carrier is a very convenient seat because the base stays installed into the vehicle while the carrier can, can pop in and out of the base. And if you have multiple vehicles, you can put multiple bases in each car. You don't have to get an additional carrier. Just make sure it's the same make and model and that they're compatible. So now I'm gonna show you some of the features on your carrier, okay? First thing I'm going to talk about is the handle. Now, the handle has different positions. Uh, the way that you adjust the handle on either side of the handle, again, are these gray um, levers. If you squeeze them both at the same time, the carrying handle will move back and forth. When it's in the upright position, like it is right now, this is the carrying position. You do not use this position in the car. The only two positions that are allowed when you're using it in the vehicle is to have it all the way forward towards the child's feet, which is a nice feature that a lot of infant car seats don't have because in a crash, when the car seat moves back, it will rebound forward. And the having the handle in this position will stop it from moving any further forward, which is nice. The other position that is allowable is just behind the shell, okay, in this position. The last position is all the way down, and that is the stand position. So if you were to have the car seat on a table or on the floor, you would want the handle in this position so the seat won't rock, okay? So again, the two allowable positions are here, just behind the shell or all the way towards the feet. Next, let's take a look at the harness system. So this is a five point harness system and the harness is going to come out of these different slots that are in the back of your seat. There are three different slots and right now I have it coming out of the lowest position. For a newborn child, it's recommended to keep it low because you want the harness at or below the child's shoulders. So we don't want it high, okay, in the top slot. As the child grows, you will have to move the harness up. And I'll show you how to easily do that. Just flip the car seat over. And you'll notice that the straps are attached to a metal plate, also gray. And the straps have two loops and right now it is set in the higher loop. So all you have to do to move it to a higher slot is just take the loop off of the plate and thread it through the slot that you want. Now we recommend doing this one at a time because if you start taking everything apart, it's easy to get confused and not remember how they reattach. So you always have one as a guide to look at. Now I'm going to slip this back on to the higher loop. The higher loop is for smaller children. As your child gets bigger and you need more space in the harness, you can slip the lower loop onto the plate, okay? So slide that back on, make sure it's secure, and then do the other side. If you'll notice, I'm keeping the harness nice and straight. We do not want any twists in any part of the harness. If there's twists, it may decrease the effectiveness of how well the harness holds your child in the car seat during a crash. And that's how you easily move them up and down. The other pieces on your harness are your chest clip which is here, your lashes and buckles. And then the most important thing 
is um, how to adjust the harness, how to tighten it and how to loosen it. Everything is done from the front here. There is a strap where the feet would be that you pull to tighten the harness. To release the harness, silver button, same spot. If you press that down and then pull the harness towards you, it will release the harness system. There's also one additional slot for your buckle and it's also very easy to move that out. Just flip the car seat over. You'll see the buckle is attached to another plate and the plate simply slips through the slot and then reattaches to whatever slot you need. So again, remember that everything is adjusted from the front on this particular seat. Now, this particular seat can be used without a base, and you can use the carrier with the seatbelt system in your car. In the installation video, I'll show you how to use that, but you'll notice, um, see here, there are additional slots on either side of the carrier that the seat belt goes through. So this is the belt path if you're using this carrier without the base. And because you don't have the base, you'll need something to tell you whether it's not, whether or not it's at the right recline. And you'll see right here, there is an arrow. This arrow has to be nice and straight on the carrier um, in order for it to be at the right angle. If the uh, arrow is pointing up or down, you'll have to adjust the carrier so that line is nice and straight again, okay? To reattach the carrier to the base, just simply uh, align it up and press down. Make sure that you hear that click and double check to make sure that they're both attached. Now, again, this is a rear facing only seat. New York State law says that you have to keep your child rear facing until at least two years old. Most children will outgrow an infant car seat before the age of two. So at that point, you'll have to look into an a different seat and those are called rear-facing convertibles, or you can um, purchase an all-in-one seat that will work as well. We recommend keeping your child rear-facing for as long as possible. They receive the most protection when they're facing the back of the car. So until that child exceeds the height and weight limit of their rear-facing seat um, is when you want to start to move them out. And this is how you use your rear facing only, even flow th uh, embrace 35.